Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, back to the Iron Reapers. Last time I actually covered these guys, um, it was just after the rework and all in all, I wasn't really all that impressed. But not only at the time did quite a few of you make some suggestions for things that I should be changing, more specifically putting a heavier reliance on the swords rather than just using the flail, but also since then, they almost seem to have improved even more, whether there's been a few sneaky buffs that have slipped through on some patches, or maybe I just didn't play them very well the first time around. But I've been really falling back in love with them over the last sort of week or so, and so I thought it would be a good idea to have a little bit of a revisit, have a little bit of a look at them and see how we've been getting on. So I have moved things around a little bit veterancy wise. I've actually been testing out a few different veterancy lines, but Eventually, um, I settled on a line recommended by another YouTuber, Super Keto. I, I cannot pronounce his full name, but I'll put a link to his Iron Reapers guide, a really, really detailed testing guide in the description down below. Well worth checking out. But this is the veterancy line that I settled on. Makes use of a few key things. Things like the self heal down here along the bottom, as well as things damage reduction and increased defenses, which makes things um, sort of quite nice. We have things like the attack stun enemy heroes, which is a really nice ability to have. It does make quite a difference because enemy heroes can really be dominating sort of small sized units. And remember, there is only 16 men in a stack of reapers like this. And then I'm going along the top line for things like the increased defenses, the range damage reduction, trying to make them a little bit more tanky. So we're coming out with just over 1200 um, piercing defense, well, actually almost 1300, so really insane armor values. And when you combine that with 12,500 health and a self heal, it does make them an extremely tanky unit. They get use of three abilities. Of course, the self heal that we just talked about, but then they get a charge, which we all know about. Sometimes I'm using flail for this if I'm charging into either really large clumps or shield units I'm tending to try and make use of the flail. Otherwise, I'm just using the sword almost exclusively and you'll see in the gameplay I'm relying a lot more on sword than I am on flail in these clips. And then finally, Tiger Step has a few things. Um, it basically makes them uh, immune to CC. It basically means that they attack multiple units at once. And they don't get stunned, because they don't have the CC, they don't get stunned, so their attacks are much more regular, so they get like an increased attack speed as well. It's kind of hard to describe, it's almost like, you think what base Iron Reapers are like, and then you add a little bit of a condo shock attack with a CC immunity, and it acts a little bit like that, but it only realistically seems to work with sword. It works a little bit with a flail, but not really. With a sword, it is super, super effective, and that's what makes it really, really very nice. Um, doctrine wise, nothing really particularly shocking. I managed to get a siege fighter doctrine from a crate, which was nice to get on because that's just going to buff their damage up that little bit more. And considering they have a really nice base damage, then you add in the tiger step, which means they can hit multiple units at once with the sword. And then you start to see that actually their damage output is really quite crazy at times. Of course, the assassination and the breakthrough doctrine, that extra little bit of piercing defense because it just wasn't quite high enough for my liking. And then, of course, a little bit of slashing armor penetration for making use of their swords. But anyway, let's hop into some battles with them. See how we get on, see what we can kill, and see who we can flatten with our Iron Reapers. So I wanted to kick things off on Wolfort, just to show what the raw damage potential of these Iron Reapers is like. I've only got one siege tower in, and it's a little bit of a tough situation, because the enemies are really heavily defending the top of this tower. I'm bringing my Reapers in, I'm not entirely sure initially what I want to do, but I decided to switch to Flail for the charge benefit, and go for the charge, because it's a really dense mass here. We land, we get ourselves sort of straight up to 40 kills, and I switch straight to sword. As soon as the sword is out, I'm on with Tiger Step, I'm on with myself here. We grab ourselves two hero kills, up to 80 unit kills already, and it just, they just massacre absolutely everything. Get ourselves up to almost 100 unit kills in the space of, what, 20 seconds? Something like that? I mean, it's just insane how much damage they can do in these close environments. But poor Musket must have run out of stamina, I think he couldn't escape. So, I mean, it just shows how crazy these Iron Reapers can be in the right situation. That Tiger Step is just lovely because of the CC immunity. It means they can just do so much damage. I then perhaps get a little bit carried away, charge into this group of archers, which probably would have been okay on its own. But unfortunately, the Paladins charge in. I get in, I just managed to get my Tiger Step on, but there's actually flames there as well. 
And even though we grab ourselves another sort of 30 odd unit kills, the flames really does for us. But in the space of a minute, we've had like three, three or four hero kills and 130 unit kills. It just shows how much damage these Iron Reapers can do in such a short period of time. So next up, we are on to a little bit of a siege on Orlenburg. Don't normally bother defending the sea point on this map, but as we were up on the walls, the enemy have actually flanked through the back gate and starting to threaten our position actually on base. Almost get grabbed by that jaw blade, so immediately go for my horse, but I've called my Iron Reapers to me. I'm firstly, targeting just these palace guards around at the back. That's going to be where our team is going to retreat from the sea point from, so it should be easy enough to take them out. Go in with the charge, just in sword mode here because they're fairly spaced out. Go on ultimately with my tiger step and start to sort of get to work. And he cuts through those palace guards really without any sort of problem at all. Somehow this uh, short sword managed to escape me. Don't quite know how that happened. Uh, but then we're just pushing on to the enemy units in the rest of the base and starting to apply pressure because there's a bit of stuff coming from both sides really. But we deal with the stuff off one side and then we're basically just hanging around the centre. We get a few little bits clearing up and uh, a bit of a jaw blade to push back so we just go and deal with him a little bit. And we're really, you know, in this sort of situation... <laughs> Poor jaw blade got shot by the muskets. Um, in this sort of situation the Iron Reapers really can dominate quite easily. As we come back to the centre, we do get some, um, some grey hairs pushing in on kind of the backside. Go over to try and deal with them. I kind of push in a little bit with the unit, but I'm actually a bit nervous about going in front of that gateway because there's a lot of stuff firing in from that gateway. And it's not really going to be uh, very helpful to go over there because we're just going to get shot to pieces. So with that done, we're then just looking where I want to go next. I kind of check in the walls, seeing where everyone else goes, and we get a unit of men at arms coming in through um, the main gateway. Okay, that's interesting. So I switched to flail because they're mostly, at least at the time, were in shield formation and charge in. I would have been as well just staying in sword here. No real benefit to changing to flail. But as soon as the charge is finished, I'm straight back into sword mode and we can just wipe out the rest of the unit really fairly easily. A few of them end up going out the gateway slightly where they take a bit too much damage. So I'm trying to pull them back in just to deal with the last couple of those men at arms inside the gate. But turning around, I've actually been pushed from the other side as well. So go straight back over, getting straight back in, bring the unit in, get them engaged, trying to deal with um, this small initially. I actually thought I'd pressed my tiger step by this point, but I was a little bit low, late in noticing that I hadn't pressed it when I thought I had. But get it on, finish off what's left, start to drive the enemy back out of the main base area again. And you can see kills are really starting to rack up here now. It's surprising how quickly and how many kills you can get with these Iron Reapers. We catch some of the Axe Raiders on the way out. They were trying to sort of, I think, get back out the gate, got caught by another unit as well, and just get them pinned down. The unit takes a little bit of damage here, but really not all that much. We can kill them fairly convincingly. As those palace guards push through and around the corner, though, I pull my unit back. Everything's on cooldown, and the unit is fairly damaged. And if I had Tiger Step, I'd gladly push those Iron Reapers straight into the front of those palace guards, and I think they would deal with them easily with that problem but given the unit's pretty low i'm just going to be walking at the front of a brace unit i'd probably win but might take losses in the process and it seemed unnecessary and then i just go back and lend a hand a little bit with my hero anyway this is uh, another dual blades around i get back on horseback and we can convincingly just deal with these couple of a uh, couple of remaining palace guards who aren't really a massive problem for us the amount of arrow fire that's going in there <laughs> not sure they're going to stand all that much of a chance Anyway, got the unit back to the supply. Wanted to head over there myself because I noticed a couple of the enemy heroes up on the wall directly in front of me. And this supply point is trebable. It's easy to forget that it is. that it is. You know, you can kind of forget that and leave a unit there and find it gets trebbed. Enemy more comes in to try and go for our um, ally Pavis. Managed to get him pinned down and killed. And the two other guys who hopped down get themselves killed as well. Not about to go up on a wall chasing around a short bow. But I do make a mistake here of running in front of this gateway. I thought I'd be able to get away with this more than I did. Um, there was a surprisingly large amount of range there. And while we don't actually lose a unit, I had to use my self-heal. And a lot of the unit did get damaged. But as the enemy team starts to really mount up and push through this gateway, I decide I need to make a move. Go back into flail because there's a lot of shield units and charge straight in. We hit a lot of other Iron Reapers as well, but we get the drop with the charge. And then I'm switching straight back to sword, straight on with my Tiger Step. And look how quickly we cut through this unit of Spear Sergeants. Absolutely butchers them. Hero goes down. 
hero unit kills just absolutely <laughs> multiplying. You know, well over 100 unit kills so far this game with these Iron Reapers. As they just cut through absolutely everything in this gateway. Unfortunately, there's enough enemies and enough enemy range that we really do lose the Iron Reapers here. But uh, I think in the end we ended up with 123 unit kills with them. So well, well worth the damage that they managed to do. And kind of gives you an idea of what the potential of this unit is. Because they really are just a very, very highly effective unit. Anyway, that's all we've got time for on today's Iron Reapers. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys. I shall see you all on the next one.